Hello, this is LJ Bothell, and this is a Microsoft Excel video that's going to show you a different kind of importing of data from another location into Excel um, spreadsheets and, and workbooks. So in this particular case, we are going to import data from something known as a comma delineated file. It could go with CSV, um, and it's basically a text file where the data that should be in columns is instead in text separated by, by commas. And it's a frequent way that you may actually get some raw information from different places and you need to bring it into Excel and make it workable. So we're going to learn how to do that. So right now I have a fairly blank file open. Um, it doesn't, it says customer's table, but there's no customer table here yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go to data and I want to get data. Now we can look up here and we can get data from pictures. I'm not sure how that one works, but we can get from text CSV, or we can look at this get data icon and click down here from file and get from text CSV. But the fact that this is such a common thing to be done I can actually click this little from text CSV icon up here. And then what you need to do is go look for the file that you need to import the information from. And because this file is in a chapter prep file folder that also has a CSV file in it, it was really easy for me to find. So I'm going to click on this and click import. And I should get a built-in little wizard here that works from within Excel. This is not working on the other end with the CSV file. It's just right here. And this is what's going to show me um, what, what's going to be in here. Apparently, this is a three-column table, and it has, or will be one, and it has this, this many um, rows based on the first. And let's see if we can do based on the entire data set. Oh, no, it's probably about the same size as it was before. The delimiter, the limiting factor between these things that separates them is a comma. And this is what it should look like when it comes. So again, um, for anyone who watched the video on um, bringing things in from Microsoft Access Database, there's this transform data button down here we're not going to play with because this is something you would do if you are um, very um, skilled and working with a lot of data analysis from different places and you're cleaning it up using Power Query and Power Pivot, um, which is kind of you know, higher end stuff. Instead, all we want to do is load this. So this is what we're going to do. We're just click load. And Excel gives us another lovely tab with just this table in it. So what I'm going to do, because I'd like to actually bring this information over, I'm going to select up here and just kind of consolidate my, my, my work. Helps me stay organized. Come over to the customer's table. I'm going to copy this, come over here to the tab called Chapter 8 Import, paste this in, get rid of this empty sheet now. And then I'm going to, this looks like it happens to be some sort of product. So I'm just going to say products. There we go. Now, what's interesting here is that what popped open was a queries and connections panel that tells us where this came from. The 51 rows were loaded, and it shows sort of the preview here to the left of what we saw when we were in the wizard. And then what we see over here is, strangely enough, that even though there's clearly some sort of header row type of information to tell us what is in the columns, this query simply brought this over in this way. Now, I may not have looked carefully enough, but I don't recall seeing something to check mark to say that the data coming over had a um, header row. So in this particular case, I don't actually need this. But the problem is we're in a table design, and this happens to be the official header row of this table, and yet it just reads these things. Now, I certainly could type over these, and that would be good. Or we can practice a little something I like calling learning on the fly. Table design. I'm going to come over here, and I'm actually going to convert this official Excel table object back to a range. Take it away from being a table. Interestingly, it also um, is affecting the, the query, which is fine. I'm not worried about that. But now I can easily delete this. 
And then I can come back here and I can make this a new table. Insert table. You may never have to do this, but this is useful to know. And then I can come up here and I can fix the uh, table design to be something that's hopefully readable. Now this is interesting. Oh, I know why this is. Okay, so you're wondering what happened. We, we, we just went and applied a table design. It didn't work, right? So here's another neat little trick. This happens when you actually have a whole bunch of formatting going on in here of cell colors. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go to the fill color and I'm going to tell it I want no fill. And what that means, it will take out extraneous fill I don't want so that I can see the actual table formatting that it's supposed to be. So there we go. And interestingly, it's still on some green lines. So I'm going to come up here and also make sure to go and um, select no borders. So that means that no extra borders are in here and the borders that come with the table design do come through. For some reason, this is showing me so I want no border there. OK, so hopefully this is fine. Now, what we could do here is we can get rid of this, delete this query and connection because we don't need it anymore. Now, this table of data that we just loaded in from a CSV file is not linked to anything, and we can close the queries and connections and start working with the data within our spreadsheet any way we want. So I hope that was helpful to you.